uh, just the Strokes and, uh, last night. Um, we just had a call, um, didn't we? From, uh, um, Johnny Mango. Oh, yeah, Johnny Mango, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, old, 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 the Mangster. Um, and he informed me that one of the worst was his dead, and I didn't know that. Yeah, Adge Cutler, who was the lead man, I think. Yeah. It was, he said he died the most rock and roll death you can die. He said he was, uh, apparently driving on a, on a terrible cocktail of cider and other things, presumably. Yeah. Apples and jams. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> he crashed into a tractor. Now, what, is that true? I, 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 JM's not winding me up. Yeah, I, hope the, I hope the Mango Boy's not, Having a laugh at me. Is that true? One of the words was died by tractor. <laughs> Did he- d is, is that true? So give us a call. What's is the number again, Carl? Oh, eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. If so, I'm- I'm sorry that I disrespected them. I didn't- I didn't know. Could you imagine? Oh, God. If- Right. Say if, like, you're the driver of the tractor. Mm. Mm. And you- you kill someone, you go, oh, God, I've killed someone. Mm. And then you look and it's someone famous. <laughs> yeah, or Adge Cutler. <laughs> Yeah, go on, what was your point? <laughs> no, it's just like, not Terrifying, only, yeah. it's like you've killed someone and you look. But I mean, yeah, I know what you mean. And what that makes is, it even worse? And what, what makes it even worse, they were rich. Yeah. Oh, no, that'd but be... say if it was someone who's like really big in the world. No, that is a I quite like that. It's an interesting point, though. Oh, that's your bag. No wonder I can't find what I'm looking for. Oh, right, well, as Bono said, did you bring a bag? Yeah. Sorry, I'm there's just, a, is that under there, Rick? Sorry, uh, sorry about this. I'm not. I'm not. Record, this is getting a bit slop sloppy. No, 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 it's not. No, no, no. No, it is, Rick. It's getting is sloppy. It? It's never got sloppy before. No, I've got a list here because we went to um, this award ceremony in a week. Um, uh, we were up for an award. Well, let yeah. me. I have to explain it to Carl because uh, basically we were up for an award, and it's called the, it's the Trick Awards. Now, Trick stands for uh, Television and Radio Industries Club Annual Awards, right? We it's never heard of it either. We never heard of it. It's some kind of like television, radio uh, industry club. Right. That's what. Yeah. It's that's the clue, isn't it? So, um, but uh, we don't want to, I'm not trying to slag off the award, because no. it was, you know, it was, it was a big thing and they really made an effort and it was really nice, food was brilliant, it was at the Grosvenor House Hotel, really nice do and, you know, lots of industry people in that there, it was really classy. We got there nice and early, so, you know, yeah. we were there for a good four yeah. hours before we had to sit down. And, <laughs> but it was just kind of surreal, it was just a bit weird, because it was packed with the cream, I'm literally the cream, big names, you know, uh, Martin Kemp, one of the first people I saw, you know, came in, like, big TV, radio, industry names, on-screen talent, behind-the-scenes people. John Barnes. Barnes was there, um... Beadle was there. Sir Cliff Richard was there. Yeah. Right. Anyway, so, it, 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 the voice comes on and says, Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the chairman of the president, the president of the, the uh, Trick Awards. And we had to get, stand up, all of these people had to stand up and give a standing ovation as he walked to his table to Tom O'Connor, former presenter of Crosswits. You are joking. No. He's the president. And he came out and he told a few gags, sort of like, it was like, straight away, it was you know, old school stuff. You want know, to like, thank the ladies, because, uh, you know, it was nothing without the ladies, all the lovely ladies here. And we're waiting for a joke. No. Nope. Just, thank <laughs> just thanking the ladies. Well, you're forgetting that just prior to that, he, uh, he said grace. Oh, he said grace. Before we ate. Right. It's me, it was me, Steve, and Ash, you know, our producer, the little, um, disabled fella, right? And he's, he's there in his wheelchair, and there's me and Steve. we you know, we're, we're, we're standing up during well, no, grace. Can I just stop you there? Go on. Saw someone in the week, <laughs> and, um... Sorry, did we bore you? <laughs> <laughs> You just reminded me then about the Go little on. producer who yeah. was in a wheelchair. Yeah. Last week you said blah blah blah, and our producer who's in a wheelchair got a text from someone saying, "What's happened to you?" They thought you were talking about me. Oh, really? Oh. So yeah. Oh. You're, you're handicapped in a different way. <laughs> So go on. <laughs> and, uh, Tom O'Connor, he said, uh, uh, thank you, God, for- We thought this was a joke initially. We thought it was gonna be like a kind of cheeky gag. That's, why we, that's why we were laughing. <laughs> that's why we were laughing <laughs> raucously. <laughs> <laughs> we went anyway. And then he went, I thank you, God, for this, uh, and, uh, and help those who walk alone. And Ash went, <laughs> what about those that don't walk at all? <laughs> he said, I've never been, I've never been left out of grace before. <laughs> So, but we had to, and we had to have kind of like bowed our heads slightly, you know. And uh, did we say our man? I know that we were sort of a lot of people did. I'm pretty sure Cliff, I, didn't. I think probably ch chimed in there. Yeah, and he sang um, it. Yeah, exactly. So, um, like Mariah Carey. So anyway, so but before again, you see what he's forgotten is before Tom took to the stage, this guy walks up there. I don't know who he is. Says. There's a lot of people here this, this afternoon, you know, it's a wonderful uh, event, but of course there's a load of celebrities as well. He says, thank you for all the celebrities that have turned up. And then he went... Table 77. Mr. Russ Abbott. And we all have applause. We, can we have the spotlight there? Russ Abbott, by the way, smoking a pipe. Yeah. Um, actually, really, he looked like, uh, a bit like, um, uh, Barrett Holmes. He's <laughs> an area Sherlock Holmes character. Then he went, table 107. The cast of Bad Girls. Clap. We'll have to clap. 
And then he went, <laughs> table five, Alice Beer. Clap, slightly smaller clapping. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, and I thought, when is this gonna- uh, He went through every single celebrity in the room. And there were about, you know, a hundred. Table 53, John Inman, everyone. It's John Inman, right, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, uh, table 70, Mr. Simon Cowell. Boo. Yeah, there was, there was booing yeah. there. And yeah. they all booed him. That was nice. Yeah, that was a joke. Ironic booing, I think. Good to cheer for Foxy. Was he on the table? <laughs> we didn't I see Foxy. Foxy wasn't there. He was doing his show. When they went up, they won an award. Cowell and, uh, Waterman and Chapman. Table uh, 43. Peter Sissons, everyone. Peter Sissons. <laughs> we went through every single name. Ricky got so paranoid they might mention him that we, we kind of legged it upstairs and were watching from the balconies. They shone the spotlight on our table. <laughs> <laughs> and it was yes. empty. <laughs> <laughs> that was particularly fun. <laughs> But, uh, then at the end, Sir Cliff got up there, right, cause Sir Cliff was giving out the, um, the Lifetime Achievement Award, right, he gets up, he uses this speech, he goes, oh, this is a personal friend of mine, a seven days a week friend, Lifetime Achievement Award goes to Mrs. Gloria Hannaford. Right, we immediately start thinking what exactly were her lifetimes achievements. I think living that long. <laughs> That's pretty much it. I don't know what it is she's done, I Gloria tell you what she does. I don't exactly, you know, I know she's done Radio 2, so I don't think that's We're not dissing her, we're not dissing yeah, anyone. We're not her. taking the mick out of anyone, but, you but, know, uh, but anyway, it was she, just a strange, it was just a strange event. But Gloria got taken unawares by this and started to ad lib a speech, right, and I swear to God, about 12 minutes in, she was telling us how, and I can repeat, I can tell you now if you're interested, her lovely daughter Karen is currently in Australia, is partly work, is partly a holiday, Carl, and she's having a whale of a time, but she's not spoken to her for ages. And then she went, she went, actually she's been there for a long time. Yeah, it's, and it's like, I was thought she was going, she doesn't call, you yeah. do that, you get a blue Peter, and this is how she's going to, we thought she was going to get war. photos out maybe, start showing it. it no, was it, was very, it was a nice bizarre. event, and uh, you know, everyone there, Henry Coop was there. Sandwich. It was like, because every single element as well was sponsored by someone. Yeah. And I was looking at the menu, I've got the program here, and the menu, right, the pudding is sponsored by Electrolux. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if you've ever had a pudding sponsored by yeah. Electrolux. I was sponsored by Zanussi. When, um. when everyone was doing the prayers, did you, did you look at them with their eyes shut? <laughs> hey, like you did at school? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, what, when you had- Did you look at someone with your eyes shut? No, like, you'd do that, you'd do your, um, your hands together. Yeah. Yep. And you sort of look at people with their eyes shut and think that's like what they look like when they're sleeping. <laughs> Play record. Didn't you ever do that? <laughs> it's a tar <laughs> That's that corner shop, lessons learned from Rocky 1 to Rocky. I love that guitar. That's mm. great, that's real glam rock, that's T-Rex and Bowie. I was in a, a place on it from, uh, Siggy Stardust today, but instead I brought in a different album, I want to play a bit of Bowie. Is that mm. alright? Oh, of course, yeah, always, yeah, always. Bit of Beatles. Mm. Still to come up, by the way. Um, we, uh, uh, with the education of Carl, last week he did, um, uh, Che Guevara. He did very well. Very well. Yeah. Before that, the, the week before that, you learned all about Rasputin, didn't you? Mm. And this week you've been studying Hitler, haven't you? Mm -hmm. How does that go? Do you, how do you look at that? It's a bit tough. Okay. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll give you the full story later, Steve. Do you know much about him? No. So, um, mm -hmm. they're all linked. All these stories I've been reading, they've all got a similar sort of thing going through them. They're right. born, they have a bit of a tough upbringing. Mm -hmm. Um, things aren't going well. And they seem to take it out on, on other people. Okay. But I'll tell you more later. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you can, I mean, I don't think Hitler and Che Guevara. It's the same sort of thing. Think. Che Guevara when he was a kid. Yeah. Had like asthma. Yeah. Right? He wasn't an happy kid. Uh, Hitler, um, he, uh. Um, he only had one ball. Well, I was, I was trying right. to find about that. Yeah. Seriously, he phoned me up in the week. I said, how's it going? He went, I've skimmed it. I've just skimmed it. I was looking for the, uh, the testicle thing. Now, I don't know if they left that out or it's not true. Right. So <laughs> he was, he was trying to look up that Hitler has only got one ball. I think they only did it to wind him up. <laughs> because it's like, you know, yeah, you might be taking over the world, mm. but we're all saying you've only got one testicle. Sure. And it's so did you look, did you look in the index and it's sort of Hitler, Adolf, <laughs> family life, early childhood, testicles? <laughs> testicles absence of. Sort of skim through because- One of. It, yeah. Mother, mother. Brackets other. <laughs> yeah. 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 Al Albert Hall. <laughs> yeah. The only thing I could find was at one point in, in like, when he was trying to run the place, uh, <laughs> there was a meeting going on and somebody put a bag in a, in the meeting room and it blew up. Yeah. yeah. And the table well, it was under the him. table. Yeah, but. What, you wondering if it blew a testicle? It was, it was, <laughs> the, well, the testicle was under the table. No, the like, bag, the bag blew off the ball. No, the ball sack was probably hanging below the, uh, protective top and so that's where he could have lost. But why would he have only just lost the one? Uh, because the-, the way he was sitting. <laughs> Cross-legged or something. <laughs> sure. Okay. Well, I mean, again, again, if, I mean, last week we had a Che Guevara expert phoned up. Maybe they could, uh, maybe there's a Hitler expert this time who could, uh, maybe phone up and confirm the, uh, the testicle, uh, yeah. theory. Yeah. What's the number again, Carl? 
Oh wait, seven hundred, eight hundred, one, two, three, four. You need to have at least I, I, a PhD I, I, or something. I don't think we should invite calls about Hitler. I think we're asking for trouble. No, I'm talking no. about someone who's done a study of him and he's done a PhD. Oh, okay. I'm not talking oh, about right. any old nutter. Uh, and also, um, uh, Carl's lottery numbers. He's a little bit more confident this week. Okay, good. He, he, he went there more like it. And I looked at him and I laughed. He went, no, no, even Suzanne said I'm, I'm on more on the right lines there. <laughs> is there is anyone who, um, uh, has done a degree in maths or A-level maths that can bear- Carl won't believe this, right? Carl thinks, I was trying to, I, I know I was tr uh, partly doing it to confuse him, just see that look on his face like a cat, right? But there is, the, the chances with a, a, a random numbers, for, the, for example the lottery, of getting one, two, three, four, five, six, are no greater than any other single combination. Right. Now that's true. I don't mean you're more likely to get one, two, three, four, five, six than any other combination put together, but then any other individual combination, they're all equal. It's counterintuitive, I know. I know you think that to get a run of one to six is less likely than anything else, but it's not. Uh, any name it to combination, it's not, Carl. If there's a, a problem well, it's never happened. Yeah, it's, ne it, it's never happened. Yeah, but there's any well, number there's of combinations that have never happened. happened. Every one of those combinations that have come up, <laughs> have happened, and they're just as likely, or unlikely, as any other combination, right? Mm -hmm. It's just that you feel, intuitively, right, that one, two, three, four, five, six are, is less likely than one, seven, twelve, thirty-four, sixty, you know what I mean? Well, I didn't win. Play <laughs> <laughs> record. Okay. <laughs> well, here we are, the day before. St. Patrick's Day. Oh, hooray! Brilliant! Guinness, etc. Oh, I hate people, I hate British English people, I should say, who are obsessed with celebrating St. Patrick's Day. You know, all crazy, it's like Chris Evans used to rave on about it. We're going to Dublin, we're going to get drunk, wow. It's like, it means nothing I to I think you, XFM just did that to you. Well, yeah, exactly. Just as careful. Bad. Careful, they are employers. <laughs> you don't want to annoy them. What, what would we do without this? <laughs> well, that's true. I yeah. have an enjoyable Saturday. No, this is my favourite two hours. You like this, don't you? Well, I don't know. We're not, we can't do this through May and June. No, we'll be gone. We've got to, be, we've got to record the second series of The Office. What are we going to do, Carl? What are you going to do on a Saturday? Host a show yourself? Do it on my own. You, you are not. Are you seriously thinking of it? Have they asked made to do you it? everything you like. Why, why would you not think about it? Because I've, I've been there, done that. <laughs> 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 Next challenge, please! Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh dear. Do you know what, do you know what, what St. Patrick did? Why he was revered as a saint and everything? What was he famous for in Ireland? He did, he rid Ireland of something. I don't know, but I bet he started off with something odd happening in his life. <laughs> <laughs> what, you think he had asthma or something as a kid? They <laughs> all, they all do. Uh, and he took it out on what though? What did he do? Exactly, he took it out on something. What did he do? What did he rid Ireland of? Uh. St. Patrick. St. Patrick. This is why we're gonna get crazy and drunk tomorrow. This is why we're all so happy to celebrate his, uh, anniversary or whatever it is we're celebrating. This is that's why, why we- That's why we have a crack. Yeah, this is why we don't bother to celebrate, you know, the birthdays of James Joyce, you know, one of the great novelists of this century, or Samuel Beckett, one of the great playwrights. We actually celebrate this man, St. Patrick, the man oh, who I did what? Oh, I don't diss him. He did a good job of it as well, because there's none there now. There are none of these in Ireland, so- mm. He rid Ireland of something. Come on, Carl. Think of something. Just give us an answer. What's he went round on a horse whacking them and... He went on a horse whacking them? Yeah. What was it, Carl? What did he rid Ireland of? Went on a horse. Foxes. I don't well, know. no, you're no, on the right lines. On the right lines. Um. It was an animal. Oh. Bears. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it was. <laughs> wow. It was snakes. Right. And there are no snakes now. He rid Ireland of all the snakes. Yeah. Who did it here then? Because there isn't that many. <coughs> well, I think he, he had a, he had a stab at it over here as well, but got tired and went back. Yeah. That's why there's is, just a few snakes here. Is, is it true that, that there are no snakes in Ireland? I think it is. I think if, if someone called it some And there, what is it? Is there any historical evidence for St. Patrick ridding them of- I mean, how did he do it? Was it like the Pied Piper? See, I, I, I'm not convinced that- he did go around because it was snakes, but there are no snakes really? in Ireland, and that's yeah. I, I don't think he's now. If someone knows he's now, we were someone just. Uh, we had a few uh, uh, probability experts and statisticians and, and maths graduates confirming that indeed I was correct that the probability of one to six in a row is no more or less likely than any other single combination mm. in a totally random selection of balls, which brings us back to Hitler, doesn't it? Because he only had one, didn't he? Well, um, but coming up, we'll be asking Carl all about Hitler, the education of Carl. He's done Rasputin, he's done Che Guevara.
Plus, of course, uh, White Van Kyle, where we White ask Van Kyle, Kyle some of the, uh, you know, his opinions on some of the hot potatoes of the week. You learn as you go along, because you've got something about St. Patrick there. Yeah. That was thrown in for free. That was an extra... I I'll learn you something, eh? Snakes. Well, I'll, I'll, sorry, can I just stop you there, and I'll teach you something, right? Oh, go on, then. You don't learn someone something. You teach them something. Yeah. It's it's not it, 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 one's passive. You you, you, you learn, you? Ricky. I'm or, sorry, mate, but I don't think you should be teaching people how to speak or use grammar. <laughs> I just don't think it's appropriate. <laughs> it's like it's embarrassing, <laughs> frankly, because there's so many errors that you're making. It's like we, where to start with you? <sighs> snakes, right? You're talking about snakes. Yeah, For, a lot of snakes are born with two heads. It's like a. It's like a. <laughs> Familiar type thing that's n that happens to snakes. Okay, yeah. They take it for granted, don't they? All right. Snakes born two heads. They'll fight each other for food, even though it's going in the same body. Isn't that weird? Mm. Were there kids at school that you were? <laughs> 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 the snake that? twins yeah. from Mosley. Oh, was, it, was, it, was there was kids at your school with two heads? Was that right? What? No, no. They had, they big, had big heads. heads. Oh, they had big heads and webbed hands, but they right. weren't related, and they they weren't friends because that would have been too obvious. Yeah. He said. Yeah. Oh, oh, Steve, listen. Before you came in, right? I sneezed a couple of times. So if I'm allergic, I've still got a bit of a cold. And I said, oh god, he went, he went bloody hell. I was like, sorry. And he went, and he went, you know, you can't sneeze with your eyes open. I went, yeah. Yeah. And then he was obviously thinking to himself still, and after a pause he went, would your eyes really fly out? <laughs> uh, and I started laughing. He went, no, because that... Has anyone ever done that, do you think? <laughs> Has anyone ever held someone down, torturing them, and held their eyelids open and gave them pepper and see if their eyes would fly out? And he said, and then... And then he went, put, oh, I'm just looking at him again, the silence, and, he, and he, then he went, of his own accord, he just went, I can't see it happening. <laughs> uh, I've got that on a compilation today, but I, I think it's off originally off uh, the Pinups album, the one we did all the covers. Cause he didn't write that, did he? Uh, the, the, that was the one with um, him and Twiggy on the front cover, isn't it? Right. I haven't had that for ages. I haven't got that. So uh, sorry, you lost me. I don't know what you're talking about. Are you reading the book there? No, I was just reading the um, the uh, brochure there, the uh, program, if you will, for the uh, Television and Radio Industries Club Awards that we went to. Incidentally, we we, we lost. Hmm. No, we we lost to Linda Green. Yeah, we didn't win an award. For the best comedy. But uh, you might be interested to know that Tom O'Connor is in constant demand for corporate functions both here and abroad, and his client list includes many multinational companies. No mean golfer, Tom took the literary world by surprise in 1992 when his first humorous golf book, From the Wood to the Tees, made the bestseller list. I noticed it didn't take the, the literary world by storm. No. <laughs> it took it by surprise. They're going, we can't say storm. <laughs> we can't, we've got to say by surprise from behind. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but uh, his, his first humorous golf book, From the Wood to the Tees, made the bestseller list. I don't know if that's just books about golf, that bestseller list. Subsequent successful books include One Flew Over the Clubhouse. Brilliant. <laughs> Genius. Take a Funny Turn. Follow me, I'm right behind you. And Eat Like a Horse, Drink Like a Fish. Does it but mention Celebrity s Squares? Didn't he do that? No. Uh, he did, um, the Crosswits. name that tune. Crosswords. Well, that's right. Um, I was. Uh, it's uh, Crosswords. Do you remember Crosswords? It, it was, was from the eighties. It was like a crossword game oh, show. It was yeah. often with um, Kate Copstick. But <laughs> I saw one right. It was on. The, it was on Challenge uh, TV. BMW. They know Andy Crane. Remember Andy Crane? Yeah. Jim, he was on the. He was the uh, link man, and he went coming up next. Uh, Tom O'Connor with uh, uh, Crosswords with. Uh, well, in my opinion, one of the best Crosswords players of all time, John Junkin. <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> who's your favourite Crosswits player? Yeah, it's got to be Junkin for me as well. But Copstick was Barry all right. Barry Cryer's bloody good. Though. Cryer was good. Cryer was good. I watched Call My Bluff um, uh, in the week. Is with Toxic and uh, yeah, Cryer? Yeah, it was, it was quite good. I quite enjoyed I it. I you could get on there if you wanted. I used to watch it with, um, what's his name? Frank <laughs> Yeah. Frank <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was great. You were impression. putting the impressions because obviously I, while Bowie was playing, you were doing your infamous Bowie impression, which is the, the best one you do actually. Well, that's just because Carl said, you know what? He said I'd love to go out for a drink with David Bowie. I have all the people that come in here for sessions. I think he's really good him, and I said I think he'd like you as well. That's all, and I just went, hello, Carl. You're strange. You're alien. It interests me. Myself and Ian, I'd like to put you on the. Yeah, I just imagine you and Bowie in a pub somewhere. Isn't that pretty much the same impression you do when you do Ian Canfield? No. <laughs> Ian Canfield's more like that. <laughs> but not on air. On air he's sort of like this sort of eloquent 40 year old capital DJ. Yeah. And but uh, when you talk to him in the studio... In, he's, he's, slowly like turning, he's, st he's slowly turning into uh, Tommy Vance, isn't he? Mm -hmm. This is one of his pillars of rock, Canfield. He loves Vance, <laughs> Lemmy, uh, Diano. If we, uh, if we run out of material later in the show, which is 
you know, likely. Yeah. Uh, considering we're, we're now talking about yeah, We Campbell. ran out of it at <laughs> five past one. Exactly. But could we, could I maybe just sort of interview you as David Bowie? Yeah, that would- a sort of humorous sketch? Yeah, that would be fantastic. Maybe it could be the idea that what if, like, David Bowie was, you know, a cab driver? What well, would he say? What was his well, sort of funny the, things he would we say? We saw that, um, that, what was that in when it said, uh, um, Dead Ringers coming up? If you've ever wondered what, uh, yeah, it did would you sound see like- Dead Ringers is this impressionist show they did a, it's on Radio 4 and they did a TV version. Yeah, I saw it. What did you make of it? I didn't like it. It was alright, no, it was just that the write-up in, uh, the Radio Times, magazine, the Radio Times said, uh, ever wondered what it would be like if, uh, Robbie Williams was singing George Formby? Or, what would it be like if, uh, there was an animal was, hospital- was, was hosted was by, uh, Anne Robinson. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I actually, no, I have. I have wondered. Was it, were those two sketches on there last night? Yeah. Yeah. What were they like? You are, you are the weak- You are the weakest dog Skink. No, what was it? It was something like, the, the, the that to vote off an animal to die or something. It was something like that, yeah. It was This is flagging. Quick, do your Bowie again. Um, oh, come in here. Look, it's Tim Machine. Now let's play Changes. Hello, Iggy Pop, you <laughs> nuts, Travis. Flowers in the window on XFM 104.9, two o'clock, halfway through. Oh, it's our favourite time, isn't it? My it favourite time of the week where we come in here and uh, play some records, have a chat. Ricky, a lot of people are wondering who you are. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Hi. And there's little Carl over there. Uh -huh. Steve, it's time for... White Van Carl. Uh, we should definitely get some jingles. I think it, it, the show sort of lacks jingles, I think. Yeah. Noises. Yeah. Funny sound effects. Yeah. That's <laughs> going on oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's Mr. Nosy Neighbour interested in? Hello, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should definitely get some pre-recorded comedy noises. Yeah, yeah well, that's my job, but unfortunately I'm busy reading about Hitler. <laughs> 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 oh, um, oh. For those that don't know and aren't familiar with this feature, basically uh, the Sun runs a white van man column where um, it asks uh, just people who, you know, every kind of, every every men and women, their views on uh, news stories from the week, and uh, we decided we'd just ask Carl his opinion on some of the same issues. This week- Not like us um, to rip off another idea and just use no, it no, for no, our own- no, 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 but this time- The yeah. white van man in the Sun this week is Herbie Crossman from Harrow and Middlesex. Um, Herbie. And he's been as he's asked, to, asked his opinion, Carl, and what's yours, on pop idol Will Young admitting he is gay. Come um, on, Carl. It's... I don't understand what the big deal is, to be honest. Okay. No. Talking to different people about it, and they've said, oh, it could affect the sales, you know, girls won't like him anymore, which I think is... is rubbish. Yeah, because it finished George Michael's career, didn't it? Well, yeah, and I was thinking when I was growing up, right... And, and Freddie Mercury. I was into, uh, Kim Wilde, right? Sure. Now... And her kids You're not gonna tell me she's gay, are you? No, but if she was, if they said, oh, she's, she's, you know... A, a leather, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say right. That's it. I'm taking kids in America back to the shop. I'm disgusted. Sure, I liked her. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm ever going to like meet her and, and marry her and that. So what does it matter? Yeah. Will Young, he's a good voice. He's gay. You know, a lot of gay people in the world. George boy was gay. I guess. There you go. Nothing more and nothing less. The kindest guy I ever knew. So do your Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. That's one of your favourite songs, isn't it? Brilliant. Kidding of Georgie parts one and two, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, um, what do you make of the police protesting to Parliament over reforms? That's not the band, before you say. Right, what, what's all that about? <laughs> okay, well the police have, uh, had various kind of gripes and grumbles which they've taken to Parliament, try and get them sorted. Like what? Well, it could take ages, basically. They, they don't like the Go pointy on. helmets anymore. <laughs> yeah. They want flat caps. They feel that their, um, they, you know, they, their powers are restricted, they get a lot of bad press, they're not being paid, well, they're, they're, they're under they, they actually, um, demonstrated, didn't they, outside? I think they may have done, yeah. yeah. Was, was, well, at least they're doing something about it instead of just sitting there moaning. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. They're, they're going to the top, trying to sort it out. Yeah. yeah. I admire that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What yeah. do you make of the police generally? Are they doing a good job? Um, they've woke me up a couple of times at about four in the morning when I was a kid. Right, was that because they were looking at- That's they were looking I for your brother in his tank? <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Did a Sherman tank just come through here? Yeah. No, my mates nicked cars and gave my name and all that. Right. <laughs> were they friends of yours? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, what do you make of fears that dumped Britney Spears, she's been dumped by her boyfriend, there's worries that she may be cracking up, Carl? <laughs> what, you concerned? What, what are the signs? <laughs> Uh, well, uh, I'm not entirely sure, I'm just reading from this section, but I would assume that she's obviously showed signs of depression, maybe? She'll be alright. I remember, like, you know, <laughs> Zoe Harris, when she sort of got bored of me when I was a kid. Yeah. 
get over it, I don't even think about it now. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, and how long did it take you, how long did it take you to get over it? Zay? Zoe Harris. To be honest, right, it was like one of my first girlfriends and she was a pain. I remember, I went out with her because <laughs> she wouldn't stop hassling me, right? <laughs> I remember- <laughs> I that, I that. That. Oh, go on then. I never talked to her and then, <laughs> the fear that really got me, I thought I'd, I half liked her and then I remember, right, we were at a school party, sort of infant school. <laughs> <laughs> Infant school? Right. Are you sure it wasn't junior school? Well, it's on the cusp. Yeah. Right, well, when you're about to leave infants and go yeah. to the next one. Yeah. And, um, she was crying because- You were saying, I don't think we should move in together. <laughs> <laughs> she was crying. She was crying. Oh, oh well, was she? She, had you she stolen her milk? She was nearly six. Why didn't she grow up? No, so she, was, she was crying because somebody had stood on a dress and put a bit of an hole in it. And I said, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> I can't stand it. Oh, so God. you, <laughs> I just think of him. So you gave her a slap. And I just think of him. He's like six, like with clogs and a flat, flat cap, going slightly bald, going for yeah. Christ's sake, woman, come on. Oh, light my pipe. Oh. Well, I finished it because all the mates were saying, "Come on, Carl, she's upset." And I was like, "Oh, whatever." <laughs> Hold on, though. No. Wait a minute. What do you mean all your mates were saying, like, come on, Carl? They were six, weren't they? Yeah, but they were saying, come on, she's crying. Help her out. And, like, and like, you did nothing? I don't know. She got injured. <laughs> got all in a skirt. Yeah, but she was upset and you were her boyfriend. Well. So what did you do? Tell me the story. Where I were you? Work out. You were at some kind of school do. <laughs> there was a hole That's in her dress. That's it didn't work out, he said. I don't, do you treat your current girlfriend in the same way? This callous disregard for someone's feelings? Current, his current yeah. girlfriend does not tread on her dress. Does yeah. she? Huh. Oh, she didn't So, as far as you're concerned, what was her name? Sarah? Zoe. Zoe Harris. You just felt like, well, you know, if she's gonna make a whinge about, you know, a silly little hole, screw her. Yeah. You're all, you're all heart, Carl. What would you have done? I'd have gone over there and give her a lovely kiss. No, you wouldn't. It's we the word. We were playing dead arm. <laughs> In the court. I was giving oh, another question. Okay, the very final oh. um, thought then. Uh, what do you say to the fact that judge, a judge who's decided that uh, we, the general public, have a right to know about uh, stars, flings? Basically, this is an excuse. This is basically saying, should pray papers be allowed to print tittle tattle about celebrities? Oh, this is providing it's proven true. Oh, this, this is something about, isn't it, a Division One football or something? It's definitely out of, of uh, Premiership football is unfair, and it is true. But he's trying to keep privacy, and the judge said, well, it's not for us to send to the press over things that are true, right. it's up to the general public to either boycott or not, you know, that, that publication. What do you think, Carl? What about all this, you know, exposing, uh, going through the, uh, you know, the bins of celebrities? It's not right, is it, but no. people are uh, interested in, in it and buy the papers to read it, do you know what I mean? I mean, like I said to you the other week, everyone has to go at Beckham for not being that bright, but at the end of the day, it's a good footballer, it doesn't really matter what goes on yeah. off the pitch, does it? Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So well, what if you were I a celebrity and they sort of splashed over the front page the fact that you just, you know, didn't care less for Zoe Harris because, yeah. Yeah. and her torn dress? Zoe Harris is still upset. Yeah, they dug her out, you know. The night Carl Pilkington reduced me to tears. <sighs> nah, I haven't done anything that bad. Sure. I wouldn't be worried. Did you win the dead arm contest? No. <laughs> I was thinking about that the other day. Do you think there's a chance I could get blood clots in later life? Did you play that a lot? Yeah, a hell of a lot. Do you ever do it, but like, kind of headbutting? No. Okay. Because that would have explained something. Dead arms. Sure. Any more? No, that's it, Carl. Um, it was food. with people's blessing, was it? You had to give them a go? Yeah. And you played it with girls? No. Alright. Oh, and the mates. Right. So oh, you okay. were playing dead arms while she was off dancing and getting her hole ruined? Yeah. <laughs> you romantic, you. <laughs> that's great. And you haven't changed a bit, have you? You still do that to this day, don't you? At functions and events. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, well, dear. what track we got here? You've brought in a track. Yes, I just thought I'd dig out some old uh, Elliot Smith. Uh, I've quite enjoyed his work, and this was a previous single and uh, the first track from his album Figure Eight, Son of Sam. 104.9. Sorry, I was going to uh, back Go announce that track and just mention it was uh, Elliot Smith and the track Son of Sam. Well, I think I'd just better ask um, Carl a couple of quick questions about Hitler. Then we can, uh, we can, you know, get on with our lives. Okay, <laughs> we can take that particular box. <laughs> yeah, put that, uh, oh, yeah. Okay, uh, Carl. Okay, put that particular it's, dictator it's, to bed. It's we, it's, it's week three of his education. You've, you've nailed Rasputin and Che Guevara. I don't want to lose complete sight of those. I, you know, I'll, I'll maybe, um, ask you a couple of those in the week just to see, keep your, your mind on it. But Hitler. What, Tell what us the story. What have you learned? Do you want to ask some questions? Uh, no, not really. Just, 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 just sum it up. 
in a minute. What is? What, what I can't do, do it in a minute. <laughs> well, uh, can I ask some questions then? Uh, where was he born? Austria. Tell us about his early life. Right, he was a young lad. <laughs> um, he, uh, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> what in his early life? <laughs> Okay. Yeah. He, what's the name? His, his, um, his mum yeah. was his dad's second cousin, which is a bit weird. Yeah, that is weird. Um, they had five kids. <laughs> She's going, yeah, it's usually first cousin where I come from. <laughs> oh, that's unfair, isn't it? Jeez. There's no need oh. for that. There was, uh, there was, there was five kids, but only two of them, including Hitler, um, including, uh, him and his sister survived, the others died at an early age. Okay. okay. Right. Um, anyway, so, they grew up, and, um, the mum died, and the dad died, and that, and he thought, oh, what am I gonna do? Because he didn't do well at school, didn't have many qualifications. No. Liked art. Did he have a GCSE in history? Liked art, right, and then, um, so he said, right, I'm gonna go out of Munich. I missed a bit out, actually. Jewish people were in Austria, he didn't really like them. Okay. Uh, he thought they got, you know, uh, special treatments and stuff, and just, didn't like him, so he went to Munich, and um, he uh, joined the army. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And um, he was in the army, and he got injured. Right. So he went to hospital, and whilst he was in hospital, uh, the w World War One ended, and he was like, "Oh God, I want to." I was join that. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so. <laughs> Don't, because you're breaking the concentration. Yeah, sorry. I, I'm not even sure I want to join in on this one, just in case. Okay. Right, go on. Right, so, um, so... He was in hospital. He was in hospital. He gets a bit better. He's never that fit, though. He's one of these blokes who was always ill. Uh, that was on something like 30 tablets a day or something. Comes out of there, uh, joins some other army. Right. Um, God, you know, I knew it all this morning. <laughs> I can see it running to ground. <laughs> I just see his face going. I'm, I'm not nailing the facts, am I? And joined a, another army, and he was. Well, <laughs> let's, let's, let's try to help you. So here's a good bit. Here's a good bit. I remember this bit. He thought that war to men, right, was like childbirth is to women. That's how important he thought he was. Oh right. Right. So it's like, um, you know, you, you fight for nine months, and at the end of it, you own something, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um. He, he goes on and all that. He's in Berlin. Yeah. And, uh, he's, he's, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's fighting his way through, like, you know, trying to take over countries and that. And he does, uh, does he do Berlin? Does he? Sorry, wait a minute. Is, is he, is he, uh, <laughs> is he Chancellor yet? Uh um, What year is it? So it's 35? So let's what, skip, let's skip the kind of climb to power then. He's now, he's now, he's now the dictator of Germany. Right, he's in yeah. charge, yeah. And this is when, you know, he gets his own back on the Jewish people and that, and he's, he's, uh, he's got his own little armies, uh, and he's setting fire to Jewish businesses and, and all this. And, uh, anyway, cut a long story short, he, uh... Please do. He, uh, when he came to, like, f fighting Britain... Yeah. ...came a bit sort of unst unstuck. Yeah. Right? Started fighting Not back. so easy, is it, this world domination, Adolf? Britain was there. France was helping out. Yeah. Americans were helping out. Yeah. So well, thought, oh god, so a bit he goes, late, but yeah, go he, go, on. he goes into a bunker in Berlin. Yeah. And it's all kicking off. Yeah. And apparently, like Germany, sort of surrenders. Yeah. So it's all over. Forget it. We can't beat you. He was really annoyed with this. And he thought, oh, I can't, I can't show my face around here. <laughs> so he. uh Because <laughs> it would be embarrassing. He's he's with his missus, who nobody knew was his wife. Right. Eva in this bunker. Yeah. And um. So, uh, so he said, oh, I've had enough of this. He shoots himself. Yeah. She poisons herself. And the chauffeur buries him or something, or burns him. Right. And, uh, in all the time he was in charge, 50 million people died. So that's 1918 to 1945. Yeah. Uh, between... It felt like that. Between, <laughs> between Travis and the Red yeah. Hot Chili Peppers. Right. Next week... That's fantastic. That's remarkable. <laughs> I, I have to say that you, you, you've sort of lost your grasp somewhere along the line, because you started off confidently, but yeah, you lost your I've had a really busy week, and last night I was like whizzing through it. Sure. And then this morning I woke up, and you know, Suzanne had been away for about three days, right? Yeah. I, I, I hardly spoke to her. She's been busy, I've been busy. First thing to say when I wake up, oh, just ask me some stuff on Hitler. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you are romantic. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's how stressful it's getting. But I knew it all this morning. Honestly. No, but that's that's fine. I think you've summed up the you know you've done that it right. Just, just for a bit of balance, um, I've got your next week's um, homework. It's the same same series. There's little books. There's tiny little books. It's just three inches long by two inches wide. Crammed with so much information. Though. Winston Churchill. There you go. You'll enjoy that. Yeah? I d I'm getting a bit bored now, though. <laughs> this is what happened in school. Think of the listeners. Did really well <laughs> in infants. Once I got to secondary, lost interest. Was it the breakup between <laughs> you and Harris? <laughs> and Zoe? The, 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 well, I'm wondering if, yeah, you've spiralled into something there. <laughs> yeah. Because it, it's, it's like all these other, you know, these men, these men of history, they always had sort of things happen in their early childhood, didn't they? Maybe yeah. yours is the Zoe Harris, um, dress yeah. incident. Well, let's just refer to it as the Zoe incident. Yeah. From now on. Yeah. yeah. Winston Churchill, the better left out in the Hitler story, Hitler was scared of this man. Yeah. And I can tell you something else about Winston Churchill. Go on. Um, he said he can remember being in the womb, <laughs> and he was born in a public toilet. <laughs> Flat record. And Carl, um, Carl called me in the week, Steve. I know, yes. I know we sort of ban each other from speaking to him. What, you seem to have just disobeyed that rule I, I can't believe it. I just can't resist it. But, um, he said, uh, oh, just saw a programme. He said, what's that big balloon that blew up when the newsreader was going all mental? And I went... Is that the, the Hindenburg? He went, yeah. Oh, I said it was a, a big Zeppelin. He went, yeah. He went, what happened? I said, I said well, it was helium, wasn't it? And I went, yeah. I said it was a big, just a huge Zeppelin full of helium. And what caused us, I don't know, it could be a spark or anything, but of course it just goes, because it's helium so flammable. And he went, now they didn't show this in the documentary, but did all their voices go funny? <laughs> <laughs> and I went, what? He went, well, no, if, if you take a little bit of a little balloon of helium, your voice goes funny. So if that was, like, millions of gallons of it, and it blew up in the air, and you were, and it was in the atmosphere, you'd be going, you'd be talking like Donald Duck, he went. So, imagine that. God. And, I, and but I, what I liked about it, I said, this wasn't in the documentary. No. No, it was an oversight. Maybe just time was against him and he didn't have time to explain Just it. like that, but that book about Hitler didn't have his one ball incident. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It annoyed me, that. What? What has? The old Hitler book. Why? Just, just because I, I knew it all. Do you know what I mean? I was cycling in today, I was like, yeah, yeah, going through it all again. Yeah. Had it all in my head. But that's why you should know something as opposed to just cram and have a piece of trivia that's, that's pre precariously sort of teetering on the edge. But why don't I understand? You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's... Well, you're not interested by it. That's it's what I mean. It's one of the most you know, fascinating things. I you am, you yeah. know all about things you're interested in, you never forget them, do you? You know. Yeah, I, I was a bit interested in it, but like I say, I mean, I'm cramming all this in, in into a, a normal week. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You go on and, you know, you watch telly and that in the week, you've got loads of leisurely time. I'm sort of using the only little bit of rest time I have to learn, as well as try to do all my other stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He texted me yesterday about Hitler. He went, he went, stop making me read this heavy shit. He said, I've seen in the back of this book, there's one on Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it is, it is interesting, but not when you have to read it, do you know what I mean? Right. It's, it's but do you think you'd have read time. it in your leisure time? To be honest? No, you wouldn't have no, read it. No. no what not. do you do in your leisure time? Um, I like, you know, going f out for food and that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. Foraging. What do you mean going out yeah. for food? Go like, have a little yeah. hole and go yeah. Hmm. hunting. Yeah. This is Carl. He's hungry. <laughs> he knows he has to get to the greasy spoon by eleven. Wow. 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 Many of he Carl's close friends have never made it across this road. <laughs> There was a zebra crossing installed just for the safety of Carl. Beep, 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 uh, can I have a bacon body into- Carl is enjoying his- Wow, but he has to get back. <laughs> his girlfriend's asked for one as well. <laughs> She's home with the PlayStation 2. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Alright, Rick. It was David Bowie impressions earlier. Now it's just a selection of crazy sound effects like that guy in Police Academy. Some. You said you wanted some. He hasn't got time to make them up. He's reading about Hitler. You heard him. Do a machine we, gun or a helicopter. We've, we've, got, we've got to do all our own sound effects. <laughs> oh. So do you want a, do you want a week off? Do you not want to learn about Winston Churchill? Why don't you read it if you want to, and just do it. if you if you get interested, then read on. I think that's because that's what I did with school, and it didn't work. <laughs> no, you decided you didn't want to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So... Well, hasn't that, hasn't that taught you something? Can't you just do it like a TV series? It doesn't go on forever. We've done three weeks. Give it a rest now for the, for like the summer. Yeah, because most series last for three weeks. <laughs> well, you know. Yeah. 
Okay. What, what's your favourite subject in the world? What's your favourite thing in the world? Um. I would have said, um, what, at school, like? No, just, just in, in, in life. life. What's, what are you interested in? Like, I like little interesting bits, like, um... <laughs> Sentences. <laughs> Atlantic Ocean. It's got 17 quadril quadrillion gallons of water in it. Right. Well, that's, that's interesting without having to read a book. And well, why is that interesting, though? What, what are you basing that on? What, what, when, you, when you think of 17 quadrillion... It's a lot, what, innit? What are you imagining? Just like a big wave. Imagine <laughs> how much water. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's your subject, then? <laughs> I don't know. No, it's just that that... Wilson, what's your favourite subject? You gave me a fact <laughs> that is so... No, but that, that sort of thing. Like I said to you before, you were talking about monkeys. And I said, do you know that if you give a monkey a childbirth tablet, it works on it the same way, because it's, it's kitted out the same Could way. Could I just say something? We weren't talking about monkeys. What were we talking about then? You know, we were talking about something completely different, and you went, if you give a monkey a childbirth bill, it works. That's what you said. No, we were talking about monkeys. We were, we were talking about sneezing. Yeah. Yeah, and you went, if you give a monkey childbirth pills, it works. That's, that's, that's... Well, like, we yeah, well, we're talking about interesting things about sneezing, <laughs> and I remembered an interesting fact about monkeys. <laughs> so... <laughs> anyway, um, half past two, brilliant. Um, oh. what did happen to that bloke who used to make the sound effects in Police Academy? I don't know. He was brilliant, wasn't he? Do you remember him? I don't remember was him. He called Hightower. Yeah, he was good. Yeah? If yeah. anyone knows, give us a call. <laughs> <laughs> God. You embarrass yourself then, Gervais. What? Well... We've had a number of calls and emails yeah. pointing out that the Hindenburg disaster was not because the Ze Zeppelin was filled with helium, hydrogen. but filled with hydrogen. Oh, right, okay. Well, I thought about that when he told me in the week. Well, yeah, but I, well, I assumed he must have got that off from the do documentary. So it just it just went up. So that, that's probably why the the voices didn't go. That was me. probably why it didn't feature in the documentary. Yeah, but it seems to me we should have thought of that. I mean, like it's school fates and stuff where they're like filling little balloons with helium. Yeah, you know, there'd be all kinds of horror stories if they were just you know just blowing up, you know, left, right, and centre. I don't think you can just blow helium up like that, can you? What? Isn't that the point? What, what I'm mean? saying is it's not. It's, it can be potentially lethal as hydrogen, helium. Well, what hydrogen isn't as bad as helium? No, helium's not as bad as hydrogen. Well, I don't know what you're saying because the, the Hindenburg was hydrogen. Yeah, and I'm saying, why did we think it was helium? That's crazy. You go to fates, school fates and stuff with, like, little kids, and they're filling up little balloons with helium. They wouldn't have big canisters of helium, you know, a, a charity event or, a, you know, a small kind of bring and buy sale if it was deadly. Yeah, but it's not as big. I mean, when you buy those balloons at a fair, it's not as big as that, uh, that, that big But presumably balloon. it's still flammable, is it? But it, was, it wasn't the fact how dangerous the, the rare gas was, or the, uh, it was the fact that, um, it was made of this thing that caught fire and just went, there was nothing, a hole in it would have been as bad. It just, it just burnt quickly and fell to the ground because the hydrogen or helium escaped. It wasn't, it was irrelevant that, what, what the gas was, wasn't it? I thought it was that there was supposed to be some kind of explosion. Well, I don't know what it was, but the point is because the outer thing was so thin, right, the, the gas inside escaped and it fell to the so ground. So it just fell to the ground like, one of the, like when you popped a balloon? Mm. Well, not, not, not It didn't quite. sort of go, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't, like, flap all over no. the place and make a zany noise. But I'll tell you what, because when I was looking on the internet in the week f for it, I was, like, trying to get a bit more info on it. Guess how many balloons it would take, helium balloons, to lift a human up? <laughs> <laughs> Go on. 6,000. Should we do it? Go on. Brilliant. Next week, that's got to be a challenge. Can we, can we, is, if, is there a sort of balloon company or, or, or some sort of, you know, uh, party company that are willing to sponsor us to lift Carl <laughs> into the air right. with helium balloons? Ten feet off the ground, where we're tethering him down, right? Is there someone willing to pay for 6,000 balloons to try and lift We Carl can maybe up? get some kind of company to sponsor it. I'm thinking like Electrolux, if they're going to sponsor puddings. If they're going to sponsor puddings, uh, you know, and, uh, 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 celebrities, Russ Abbott, they will sponsor Carl being lift. Heat magazine, Heat magazine, come on. They're big selling, a very successful magazine there, and they know about Carl because they've mentioned him. Heat magazine, can we have a heat balloon? Yeah? Oh, six Carl, thousand's an awful into lot, the air. Six, yeah, it's the heat 6,000 Carl challenge. Lift Carl 10 feet into the air. Yeah. Come on. What about if it was Carl and Dr. Fox? We can get two different balloons. I think we need a lot more than six thousand. A lot more from Fox, isn't it? Mix, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just explained what I'm laughing at. Right? We just had a call. 
um, from someone saying his company would sponsor Carl, right, to be raised by all these balloons if he could have a walk-on part in the office. And uh, uh, we immediately went, oh, we're worried about that sort of thing. You can't really promise that artistic. You know? And I was worried about the legality of it as well. How can you promise someone that for personal gain that's a private and all that sort of stuff, right? And I went, oh, I don't know in any way. Put the phone down to him and Carl went. <laughs> I love the fact you're more effing worried about that than me being raised 30 feet in the effing air. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, you started getting scared, did you? Are you worried about it? Well, you're quite excited about the idea of the challenge, though, aren't you? I like the idea, but I want, like... <laughs> <laughs> Why do you like the idea, Carl? Oh, what if it went all wrong and we're there going, oh, the humanity of it. I think we need Carl to get- Carl is just, he's just- I think on the road would pull out my trousers and pull you Oh, no, it's definitely got to be Dr. Fox if that's going to happen. Uh, oh, oh, God. Oh, we've got to do this. So hang on, but let's just no. think about the, because wait a minute, before, I mean we say this, but we'd have to get all kinds of health and safety people involved. No, we, no we wouldn't. Of course we can't! <laughs> the air. No, you're allowed to do it on private land, aren't you? Not what happened to the Hindenburg! No, but that was, that was, that was, I was just saying, there was lots of people dying. <laughs> Listen, look, all we do is we get, all, we get someone right. But what if, what if he, get, he gets loose and he just floats off into the air? <laughs> and he meets his magpie that he lost. He yeah. used to peck his grifter. <laughs> So we're, we're so excited about this. Talk. Listen, we've got to do this. So Please. Please. Stop, a minute. No. stop and think about it. It's right. 60,000 balloons. No, no it's not. It's 6,000. 6, 6, but 6,000 balloons are a lot of balloons. No, it's not. No, no, oh, it's not. It's silly. For sponsorship, people pay for... Uh, no, listen, it's worth it. There must be a company out there that are paying for this, just so we can film it. Oh, is there not an easier way of just getting <laughs> one big balloon? Then <laughs> the challenge is no. there's no challenge there. No, it's yeah, got to be... It's got our people coming up and hooking balloons. It'd be like Buckaroo. And the person who puts the balloon that actually raises him 10 feet wins a prize or something. So hang on, so what we got, we've got each person with like oh. 500 balloons. Yeah. That's mad, can you imagine how many balloons that is? That's ludicrous. 6,000? Yeah. That's an awful lot of balloons. I don't know, you do, well, we, there must be someone that, that, that could do this. Oh look, people have walked on the moon for Christ's sake, we can raise Carl Pilkington with some balloons. Yes, but they had a NASA budget, we've got XFM behind us. Yeah, but balloons, <laughs> yeah. balloons are cheap, you can get about a pack of 25 for about 150. <laughs> right, fine. <laughs> no, True. Yeah, the helium though, Carl, you can't just like, attach yourself to a pack of balloons. No, but... Oh. What, you think we blow them all up? With helium. Right. Oh. Off you go. But then we can do something with the balloons, can't we? Like, release them afterwards. Oh, we'll release them back into the wild. <laughs> Brilliant. As a sign of peace. <laughs> fly, my pretty fly. Listen, be free. I am so excited. I have not been so excited about and, and so I thought that Robin Ince was going to stay in my cupboard for a thousand pounds. Look, we've got to, we've got to do 6, this. Six thousand balloons. I don't think it's going to happen. That's an awful lot of balloons. And I just don't, oh. think, I don't see how we can tether them all to Carl. He's a small man. No, but because you have about different lengths, don't you? Yeah, exactly. Carl knows. Can you uh, think about the logistics of this? Oh, someone must know. There must be a couple of, there's a bloke willing to do it. I, I know he doesn't know the technology of it, he's willing to sort of stumble. And that's not a company just on, has we, access to helium like that. So we can do this, come on. London. Well, someone's done Londoners. It. it was on the internet already, so someone obviously has done it. Yeah. So they didn't say, oh, we can't get hold of the balloon. No, they probably worked it out, didn't they? Must I can't, Carl, you're oh, more yeah. excited about this than anything else, about your education, about your exam well, results. Just so exciting. And, we, and we'll have a little rope, we'll like fly in a little kite, a little Carl. We're, uh, let's go and fly. Carl, what will you wear, like a one-piece jumpsuit? Yeah, I mean, no, with sponsorship all over it. Oh, it'd be yeah. great. You know, like Jackie Stewart, and just as you go up your little face. Oh my God, I'm not going to sleep until this is done. This is the most exciting thing ever. Only ten feet. Ten feet, yeah. And we need tethier. some. We need some kind of rope to sort of tether you to the ground. Yeah. We don't want you sort of flying <laughs> this off. This is going to be great. And you have a little crush helmet and everything, and little Dee boppers on the crush helmet, like yeah. it's a little flying ant. Definitely, definitely. We give him a little. Oh my God, can we give you an outfit like little wings and everything? Can oh. we paint your face with like children's no, paint? I'm not yeah. Doing all that. Why? Oh, no, because that'd be silly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please, Carl, do this. Do it. We're doing it for charity. We're doing it for charity. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, this is really brilliant. Children need. Please, just phone in if you got if you can help us lift Carl up. 30 feet, let's say 30 feet. I think feet. it has to be a decent... Yeah, yeah. it has to be a decent well, height. Is there a world record? Because we want to break that if we Yeah, we want to break that. that. What is the world record for raising a man by balloons? Yeah. Okay, oh. so listen, let's just, let's just finalise oh. details here. We've got... I'm uh, so excited. ...email address, ricky.gervais yeah. at xfm.co.uk. Yeah. Ricky.gervais yeah. at xfm.co.uk. What's the number? What's the number? The number, Carl? 0870-800-1234. Oh, Lift, again. Carl. Again. Lift, Carl. 0870-800-1234. Oh, uh, sponsored by Heat Magazine and or you, something. Maybe like. even if you've just got an idea 
idea about how we might be able to organise it, how we'll be able to get it done, if you've got contacts, anything, just get in touch, give us some information. Oh, oh, that'd be great. I'm gonna play a Beatles track for some for, for the lovers. Oh, man. It's, uh, it's off the Help album and it's, um, You've got to hide your love away. Oh, just think of his little face. Peter Bay is with me, Steve Merchant. We've enjoyed your company. Carl, we're going to try and get Carl in the air. Anyone that can help us, take him up with helium balloons. Um, our friend Johnny Mango called again, and uh, apparently the record's 11,000 feet. Carl is getting a little bit nervous. Yeah, the, the world record is 11,631 feet raised by hot air balloons. How, yeah. how tall is uh, Canary Wolf? It's 11,631 feet. Exactly. What? I don't know, Carl. Is it? How much higher? It's a long way. Uh, uh, more. Yeah, I'm not doing a lot. Because I'm like six foot something. Yeah, think of that. Just, just look at Steve. Alright. Yeah. But you can change your record. You could say, well, the sort of balloons are the one with, with Mickey Mouse on it or something. Yeah, could I just, yeah, uh, could I just say something? That man did 11,000 feet, but he wasn't naked. <laughs> Alright? Come on, Carl. You'll be the, your 30 feet will be the world record for naked ballooning. Yeah? Mm. Think about it. All right, it's for charity. Well, thank you for listening, everyone. We are going to raise Carl. We are going to raise Carl. And after, after uh, Carl said, and just to think, my teacher said I'd never be a high flyer. So this is your chance, Carl, to shine, to fly. Steve. It'll be brilliant. Uh, this is a final song for the ladies. Spell and Sebastian, we've not heard uh, them for oh. a while. This is from, uh, it's actually a B-side or a triple side or whatever you call it. Um, track three on a single called Jonathan David. This is the beautiful The Loneliness of the Middle Distance Runner. Play. Goodbye. Absolutely. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Hello. Carl, the, uh, the producer. Mm -hmm. Seven minutes past one of a Saturday, and what a lovely Saturday it is. It is indeed. By, well, it, it looks nice and bright, but it's deceptive, because I went out, and I just had a t-shirt on, and I had my jumper on me. I got out there, and I thought, this is chilly. <laughs> I, had pop, I had to pop the jumper on. Oh, no! So, uh, you know, good. just be careful. If, you, if you're just, uh, you know, looking out the window thinking, oh, I'll go outside, pop a jumper on, or, or, or a jacket, because it looks nice, but it is a little bit colder than it looks. Rick, can I ask, were you wearing the jumper around your waist, type of the knot, or did you have it over your shoulders, like maybe you just jumped off a yacht? I popped it round my waist, and I'll tell you why. Okay. I tucked my t-shirt in for neatness and comfort. Lovely. But I know, even I know that's a little bit dorky, so sure. I was trying to hide the belt line. Okay, okay. So, uh, then I popped the jumper on, didn't have to worry about it, Did so you no, go with the double knot? I didn't, I did, uh, uh, Because that can loosen if you're not careful, especially if you're carrying bags or you're busy on the tube. I know, but I wouldn't mind that, as long as I didn't lose it, as long as I saw it loosen and fall, like, <laughs> okay. I pick it up. And <laughs> then, uh, if and then clean the it. Things. Not in the uh, washing machine, though. Just, I'd pop it in a cold wash soak, okay. right, and then leave it out on a few towels or something, or pop it over the radiator. So what's the problem with uh, putting it in a hot wash? Well, it can cause shrinkage. <laughs> oh, no. So, uh, <laughs> coming up, we've got lo loads of tunes. We're going to be playing um, some of the best bands around, some uh, some new ones, some old ones. Might even play some um, uh, Adaman. We don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have uh, Bally Drawn Boy, though, shall we, Carl? Is that the one with the duck? Yes. Very yeah. good idea. Apparently he stopped wearing his hat around because he keeps getting recognised. And he's gonna not wear his hat when he doesn't want to get recognised. Okay. Maybe pop it in the wash. Mm. Mm. I mean, be careful, let's just have a kind of a light cold well, rinse. Well, yeah, light cold rinse, soak it, yeah. right, because it's woollen, right, mm. and then just leave it out on a towel, or, you know, maybe in, mm. in you know, near the immersion heater. Sure. Or over a radiator, well, or even the sun. radiator, is that a problem? It can <laughs> cause that sort of, you know, <laughs> damaging to okay. the fibres of the wall. He had, well, he had a kid last week. Did he? Yeah. Who did? Badly drawn boy. Oh, right, okay. Dad, Badly drawn little boy, he's yeah. gonna call it. Funny. Brilliant, Rick. Yeah. Well done. It's a <laughs> sort of satire. Mm. I'd like to see that as a headline, you know. deliver your, your money or your, your life. <laughs> oh. Um, now, <laughs> go ahead. Oh, Carl, can we don't explain panic. why that's funny? Don't panic, Carl. I'm a professional. Don't worry. What's your concern, Carl? What's your concern? Nothing. Tell us. <laughs> no. You can say. You I can, can't. You can. This is so unprofessional. It's. What? What? What have we done? What, talking about wool? No. <laughs> Come on, Carl, what's the problem? What's the problem? You say. <laughs> He's great, and he? He's lovely. so scared. Um, Come on, Carl, what's, tell us. I don't know all the ins and outs, so I don't want to get into it. What? The thing. No, well, you, look, could, you can't, look, people are perplexed now. What's the, what's the thing, Carl? What's the thing? What are you worried about? Say. Is it, is it an email? That's been received by the head of yeah, XFM? Yeah, you, you've got the email open. You, you can talk about it, you can say what it is. Okay, yeah, let me just without, say. Without, without, I don't understand it. Please note that under, uh, under a ruling at the Old Bailey, any yeah. reference to Adam Ant's state of mental illness in any news report will constitute a breach of the ruling and therefore lead to serious action from his lawyers. That's right, and that's true. I subject we can't, we can't talk about that. You can play his records and 
Sing his classic sing, song. Sing songs. Yeah, well, it's best just to leave it, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's what we, yeah, Carl was a little bit worried. There's no way I was gonna mention that or influence anything, and I totally agree with the law, so don't, don't panic, Carl. I should have never been sent to you. <laughs> <laughs> why? Because it's like, you know, accidents happen. Go on, when, then. When things like that happen, right, you know, you've been told not to mention it. Yeah. And you're like a little kid. Yeah. And, and once things are in your head. Yeah. It's difficult not to mention it. I mean, when, uh, when I was a kid, <laughs> yeah. one, right, me, uh, yeah. my mum's sister, Hazel, right. was, was seeing another bloke, <laughs> um, it's weird cause she's a lesbian now. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> that must have been an interesting Christmas, by the way. <laughs> but anyway, she was seeing this bloke and he looked like Ken Dodd, apparently. He looked like Ken Dodd. Looked like Ken Dodd. So people said, "Don't mention it because it gets it gets on his nerves when you when you like meet him and you go, oh god, you look like Ken Dodd." So I said, "All right, his name is Will or whatever." And uh, I was introduced to him. First thing I said, "Nice to meet you, Ken." <laughs> <laughs> did you do it as a joke or did you? No, no, because you know when you know, they like, "I'm not allowed to say that." Yeah, say that. I can't mustn't say that. Can't. And then yeah. I saw him, I thought, "Jesus, does look like him." <laughs> Came out. <laughs> <laughs> was it Dodder you turned her into a lesbo, do you think? <laughs> well, he wasn't a good looking bloke, so. Yeah. Possibly. She started going out with Esther Ranson, though. <laughs> which is, which is <laughs> weird out of the prime. What was the story with the lesbianism then? Did, 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 how did she announce that to everyone? What um, age was she when she realised? Well, we, we, I mean, we're not a close family, do you know what I mean? We're not no. a family who keeps in touch with everyone. <laughs> and I think my mum called her up one Christmas and sort of said, you know, how's. How's the Diddy men? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, and yeah. she said, "Oh no, I'm not. I don't do that anymore. Um, I'm knocking about with Sandra, or whatever." Right. And it was like, "Oh right." Not big butch Sandra with the big earrings and the skinhead. <laughs> he used to live down the road from you. I, I don't know. He used I to get know. Doc Martens wholesale. That Sandra. <laughs> but but she lived. She had a haunted house. Go on. Um, <laughs> Who's Sandra? No, Hazel. Right. This, is this before she was a lesbian or not? Before. Okay. And um, there was a bike in the hall and the pedals used to go back. <laughs> there was a what in the hall? <laughs> a bike. <laughs> <laughs> that's handy, isn't it? <laughs> oh, okay. that's great. Don't worry, we won't do, do anything. So, sorry, no, there was, I want to know about the haunted house. There was mm. a bike in the hall and what There was happened? a bike in the hall and the pedals used to go backwards on their own. And also, shoes used to stick to the wall or something. Did they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shoes used to stick to the wall? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That sounds like a- That's a haunted house. A, a, a household. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. dear. Brilliant. Maybe she should clean the walls. Great start to a show. We've had we've had twenty minutes of some of the the best banter, chatter, and music and anecdote anywhere on the dial. You're damn right. High five. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Sweet man, sweet. Oh, uh, what are we talking about? Uh, now, oh, oh wow. Well, I, I love that track. It's lovely. I lo they've got a bit of the, the Liverpool gene pool, haven't they? That sort of doddy. You know what I mean? I like the Scouse sort of look, you know, the Scylla Black and the Stan Boardman. Yeah, it's particularly it's sort of, unique it's, to Liverpool. It's sort it? of happy and teeth and ears. And, <laughs> it's you know happy I mean? and teeth and ears. Yeah. <laughs> what a brilliant description. Yeah. Happy and teeth and ears. <laughs> yeah, that's just three of my <laughs> friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, we've got a great track lined up, haven't we, Carl, that I've brought in. So I'm gonna go off. Now, I'm not ashamed. As you know, me and Steve aren't worried about being part of a trend or, or, you know, being trendy or jumping on about it. Steve particularly doesn't worry about, like, looking good or, well, you know. Uh, no, no, I'm saying. No, I, as a compliment, you don't, he, doesn't, he doesn't worry about walking along like that or, you know. Well, this is, like a, I'm looking good. No, no, no. Good but I'm saying you don't mind the insults freak boy or goggle eye or. Uh, water off a duck's back, mate. Do you know what I mean? Or, or a new phrase that's been coined because of Steve's phrase, water off a frog's back. Who's saying that? Uh, just a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of you. What? A lot of friends and that. But I mean. Well, my friends? Yeah. A lot of, uh, a lot of the people. Can you, you name names or? I, I can't really. No promises. You can't. I, I can't. I can't really. Press anyone up. I, I think it's the cagoule. Looks good. It does look. It's good. It's waterproof, Rick, and it's also stylish. I wear nothing underneath, so it's tight Ooh. to the skin. It gets sticky oh, in the weather. Yeah. Is that why you sort of rustle? Sexy. But what's the, what's the, what's all the? Is there abuse? What's the no, no. They just say because I'm pretty trendy guy. But I, I, as you say, I cut my own trend. You know, I make my own style. You know that. Consequently, the pipe. You don't feel that's an affectation. I, I don't think, I think because you're young and tall, yeah. the pipe looks a little bit silly. Go on. I mean, I know you're, wor you're worried about because because we've already lost the trilby. Well, I'm worried because pipes are going to die out. I mean, this is the problem. That there's no young people now who are taking up the pipe as a smoking device. Is there's there no anyone, is there anyone under the age of, what should we say? Oh, we've said this before and I don't think there was, there was no one. I think there was some nutty old woman who phoned in and said, I smoke a pipe. But yeah. I'm talking about, you know, because years ago it was like an Oxbridge student, you know, you'd be at Cambridge or something, you'd have a, a lovely pipe, you know, a tweed suit, you'd be there studying. That was, you know, and that was the young gent always smoked a pipe, but no one is now. I'll tell you this, in the year 2050, there'll be no pipes. They won't exist. 
well, I think all all um, drugs like uh, nicotine and alcohol will be banned, and we won't uh, we won't be allowed to think our own thoughts. We'll have to live in the sewers, like eating rat burgers That's or something, enough. won't we? Yeah. And we'll have to download our memories or something. Oh probably. God! And I, I but I'll be a rebel, Rick. I'll just no, be down there listening to jazz. No, you won't. Yeah. You'll, you'll just have a little chip in the back, and you'll be you'll be going out with a big fat man with a big toga on, and there'll be and you'll be you'll be touching him. But well, I think he's a beautiful woman. <laughs> yeah, you will. Yeah. yeah, and I'll be fighting with the. The Rebel Underground. No, you won't. I will. No. I will. I'll you be dead, won't I? <laughs> you'll be dead, yeah. I'll be dead, yeah. In 2050, you will. I'll be dead. Unless you, because obviously you're becoming quite wealthy now. You're becoming a very rich man, obviously, from all your, you know, I'll celebrity have brain, endorsements. I'll have my brain put into a robot. <laughs> exactly. Made of titanium, and yeah. I'll have it, oh. Would you be cryogenically frozen if you could do it? I would, but I'd leave myself out on a towel. <laughs> right. Never, because if you do it too quickly, you, there is shrinkage. You've got to be that, careful. Did you read in the paper this week? This is true. Apparently, the, um, the world's oldest man, who's 113, lives in some little part of Japan. Sure. Like a little island in Japan. Mm. But apparently, the world's oldest woman also lives in exactly the same place. Now, I don't know if she's since died, but she lived in the same place as well. Do you not think there's something suspicious going on there? I mean, isn't that a bit eerie to I'm, you? I'm thinking, have you ever seen them together? <laughs> and have, has he ever, have you ever found lipstick in his bag? <laughs> I think that would be one and the same. I wonder if it's something like, you know, what, what, what brought Godzilla back? There's some kind of... There's oh, some antics no. over there. No, there, there might be, might they're sort of like, yeah. Although, just hearing like, some of Carl's stories about school, there's somewhat going on there where he lives. Yeah. Did you say you did live near a sort of, um, nuclear plant or something? I found out it wasn't a nuclear plant, it was a chemical plant. <laughs> My god. Yeah. Really? And is that, is that really true? What colour was the yeah. tap water in your area? It was better than it is in London. Right. Really? I was talking to someone about this the other day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> water in London's ropey. <laughs> Um, and, and I use one of them water filters. Do you really? And the guy down in the office was saying it's a waste of time though, because they only work for a couple of water, like you fill your jug twice, and then the water's going through the same muck, isn't it? That's true enough. But so it's not, it if it's not work. getting through, it's not getting through. No, if but- If it's, it's a filter, it doesn't matter, does it? S still not good though. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Good point. So you just, are you just throwing it away based on what that bloke said? <laughs> did, did he sell, did he sell, did he sell you another one yeah. that he had on yeah. him? Did a, he better, a better updated model. <laughs> yeah. Did he have a suit with a When you say, like, he works here, was he actually hanging around outside? <laughs> yeah. Did, did he with have a, a suitcase with, with a lot of these in? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, well, dear. No, so just go back to insults briefly. Go on. You know, you're saying. <laughs> oh, no, no, I, uh, see that. Goofy, that's no, not no, no, fair. no, because that's it, that's what he said. It's in the head. I, what I, do you mean he said? No, when did he no, say that? No, I mean. When did you call me goofy? No, he didn't. I he said about what's in the head. Hey, no, when it's come on. Come off it. Don't what? Who's calling me goofy? No. I'm not even goofy. Goggle eyes, fair enough. No, you can sort your cow, I can't. But yeah. you know I can how can I sort my look out? I'm not even goofy, you've that's got, not fair. You've got the proper features. What? Just needs sorting out a bit. I can't help it if if my hair's not good. I noticed the other day when <laughs> Carl was sitting on your knee having his picture taken. Yeah. It's a long story, right? <laughs> yeah. He's got a completely spherical head. It's slightly too small. I'm not being funny, because I mean, you know, well, I'm not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got a completely spherical little head. He looks a little bit like a baby hamburger. You know hamburger off, um, uh, McDonald's? Sure. He looks like a little baby hamburger. And it's sort of quite put upon. It's- S Suzanne thinks a lot like that thing in that <laughs> Dulux advert. Do you know when the woman pulls the head off that? <laughs> that little plasticine yeah, morph type and then they make a new ad for it. And it's like a little ad. <laughs> really? And that's your girlfriend saying it. I know. Anyway, listen, let's let's get back to uh, uh, business here. This is uh, a great track. It's America by Simon and Garfunkel. This is what I started saying. We don't care about being trendy and all that. Strokes, last night, XFM 104.9. We're flying now. 35 minutes into it. <laughs> no, real, no real hiccups. I don't think that Not I... so far. And that, oh, it's, it's going really well. My name's Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve. Hello there. Carl. All right. All right. Coming up soon. White van man. White van Carl. We ask Carl the questions that the son asked someone else. <laughs> exactly. It's a good feature. It's a great feature. I'll be testing Carl on the new, the, the new re-education of Carl, as you know. He got a GCSE. So the last one, innit? In history. It was the last heavy sort of one, yeah. No. And so Winston Churchill. We, yeah, because we've got, we got, we're going on to more sort of uh, metaphorical and metaphysical uh, sort of uh, pursuits, aren't we? Not that book. Yeah, that's the Aesop's Fables. I can't fables. that in a week. You don't have to read oh, it, right, just choose out, yeah. just choose the ones about the foxes eating penguins. You'll like that. Steve, over to you. <laughs> Thanks very much. I wonder if, I don't think we've uh, made much progress yet on uh, sending Carl into sort of, uh, into the air with the No, balloons. this has gone a bit ballistic, actually. I've got the idea. 
Oh no, shut no, up. No, don't you? Got the, 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 we've, we've, we've inflamed the imagination of the capital. There's people offering left, right and centre and, uh, I think it's a good idea but I think we, we should, we should, uh, you know, make a day of it. I think we should send you up in some balloons, right? Maybe, uh, you know, I've Well, hang on, let's, before we carry on, let's explain what happened because people might not have listened last week. I don't believe that. <laughs> there are one or two, Rick. I don't believe that. People who are Name ill, them. maybe out of the country. Okay. Um, yeah, so last week we discovered, was it that 623, uh, is it 6,000? No, I read that 6,000 balloons filled with helium can lift a bloke off the floor. I think that's too many. I think that's too many. I think we could do it for less, certainly. Well, anyway, you. listen, there are various <laughs> organisations which actually exist already <laughs> that can provide this kind of entertainment, this kind of fun. I mean, I didn't realise there was a whole kind of market for this already, but apparently there Nor is. Nor did I, know. Incredible. Anyway, um, so we're going to try and track one of them down. We're going to see if they can, they can, uh, organise it so that you, Carl, can float into the air. We need to get you, what, is it at least 11 feet up? Yeah, if it's and just I think it's certainly higher. I mean, I can't remember what the record is, but it's quite a long way. Eleven thousand, eleven thousand feet. Yeah, but I think they're all official. We're, I want to do it with like little <laughs> those little balloons you get for a quid at the zoo. Or I don't something. think that can be right, health and safety wise. I don't think that can be healthy. I I, I, I think as we if we get him to sign something, which I will. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we'll cover our sounds. But yeah, certainly we're thinking of maybe making it a bit like um, was it is it tea in the park. The yeah. Uh, capital FM, uh, yeah, event, the, the you know, big event. You get sort of steps, at least hates from steps can come down and yeah. host the event. I mean, uh, oh, oh, I don't mind, uh, comparing it. Steve's gonna do, uh, Steve's learning to sort of like scratch and mix and beat match and he's, I mean, you're getting pretty... I'm making a lot of progress, yeah. I'm you're, 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 you are gonna be a turntablist. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, Steve never learned an instrument which he regrets, you know, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he's a modern lad and, uh, he's, uh, he's using t uh, turntables as his instrument. I just I got two turntables and a microphone, and so far, I mean, I, seriously, I'm cutting out big style. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't don't laugh because it is mental. <laughs> the sort of kind of stuff I'm coming out with, and I'm scratching. I've got I've got the, the beats, you know, matching. Can you imagine that? Shut up! It's that. No, no, no. If, if look at the Chemical Brothers, for goodness sake! If you're talking about freaks, <laughs> <laughs> those things. Man alive! <laughs> at least you cut your hair at Gavin. You know that the whatever it's called. They used to kind of at least faintly appear in their videos. So this yeah. one is just some shots of like what you see from outside a train. I That's know. Just, to them. That is. More more glamorous and exciting, apparently, than yeah. seeing the lads themselves in the video. Who do you think's cooler to look at, Steve or the Chemical Brothers? Steve. Definitely, yes! You're absolutely right, Carl, and that's the first sensible thing you've said if, for a long time. If I was time. to work with Steve on, on some music, yeah. if I had the choice, I think Steve would look better on a album cover. Really? Yeah. What would you do? Would you change him at all? To, what would you do with his I'd, image? I'd put him in the distance so I... <laughs> could... I can't believe this is... This no, just so you don't look as tall, that's doing you a favour. <laughs> You know, I was on the, this is true, I was on the, uh, <laughs> on the tube, right, coming in to meet Gervais the other day, and I was wearing a suit and I, my mobile phone slipped out of my pocket and it landed on the seat, and I didn't realise this, and as I was about to get off, some bloke who was sat there like an old guy, he picked up the phone, he went, Oi! Uh, Lanky, you dropped your mobile phone! <laughs> and I was like, well, I thank you for pointing out I dropped my phone, but did you have to do the lanky? Well, you knew what he meant. I bet you turned around straight away. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> you yeah, but he's done you again. But he's I was the only up. person stood up. It was a fairly empty train. Was it, was there any other lanky people there? No. Well then, no. But my point was there was no one else at all. It was about to exit the train. Okay, so he didn't need lanky. He could have got excuse me, sir, or oi you, anything, but oi lanky. I know. It's that thing though, isn't it? That's what I'm talking about. You say the thing that you don't want to say. It's like me with Ken Dodd and Will. I think he wanted to say this. <laughs> oh well. I think he took pleasure in it. <laughs> he, I think he went, that bloke's lanky. I shouldn't say that. Yeah, I should. <laughs> Why lanky? What's he gonna do? Phone. Yeah. Do you but want it, your phone back or not? But this balloon thing, anyway, I, I, it's got a bit out of hand. Why no. is it out of hand? What are you no, it's about? funny. I just wanna, I want, you know, you know I wanna sort of like tie them all to the back of your belt, so as you go up there, you sort of tip forward <laughs> slightly, so you're going up slightly upside down. We could paint some advertising on your bald head. I knew, yeah, oh, that'd be great. Yeah, we'll do that, lanky. <laughs> I mean, great. Here he comes. No, I mean, last week it was just a bit of fun about going like just lifting my feet off the ground. No, and that's a big difference to what it's got now. No, okay, well, I tell you what, we do a hundred feet in the air, and we and I'll hold on to the rope, but, but we'll do it at Wembley Arena <laughs> with our tickets. That's but it'll right. be for charity, Carl. No, it'll be for charity. Right. No, we'll have lots of underprivileged kids coming along to see it's it. Just you know, out of hand. It's like, um, you know, I, I like karaoke, <laughs> but I wouldn't want to go on stars in their eyes. Sure. And it's, it's got out of hand, that's how it's sort of, it's grown too big, I don't Who like would you it. do if you were on Stars and Right? I'd do that, uh... Moby? No, that Jack the Knife song. I love Jack that. the Knife. <laughs> Old Mac Heath. Okay, okay. That one, yeah? yeah. It, it's Mac the Knife. That's what I do. <laughs> but which, who would- <laughs> Maybe he'd do a hip hop version. <laughs> but which of the many singers would you impersonate? You can't, it's not the song, is it? It's the uh, singer. You could do, um, Jimmy Somerville, I think. 
quite well. Yeah, some of all you've been uh, good at. Moby. Um, did Morph bring out a single? I don't think Morph did. Didn't he? No, I'm not sure. I'm sure didn't he have a theme tune? Did Morph? Phone in if you think Morph. Morph didn't speak, Rick. Let didn't him he? sing. Morph hardly had any features. True. Right. Look at your face. Steve's got the sun. Yes, I'm sure. We're white just going to be doing Van White Van Carl, where we ask Carl the questions the sun asked some other bloke. That's right. Because we think Carl's got more to say than anyone. On anything. Sure. Carl only tells the truth, by the way. Just remember that, listeners. Off you go. Yes, um, well, today's white van man in the sun is John Slade. He owns his own door maintenance company. <laughs> um, his, uh, his answers are very informative, I have to say. But Carl, what do you make of, uh, the Channel 4 producer, aged 30, who duped a school into believing he was a teenager? For a documentary. Are you familiar with this story? No, go on. Well, basically, a 30-year-old guy kind of fooled the school into, um, into thinking he was a pupil for a, a secret documentary. The school's outraged. Do you think that that's, uh, you know, it, it, for you, you know, it, should anything go when it comes well, to making TV? I think I've said to you before, um, there's loads of kids at my school, I remember being in the first year, and kids who, what did, what year do schools go up to? <laughs> I was in the first year, what, what is it? Eleven. Five. Oh, sorry, first year of infants and juniors. No, secondary school. Eleven. Right. Year eleven. Um, kids no, have beards and No, stuff. not year eleven. They're eleven when they first go to secondary no, school. right, well I'm eleven. The kids at the, uh, at the older well, end. Well, there's a well, fifth form and then there's you can leave when You, you can right. leave when you're sixteen, I think, can't you now? Right, well kids who were sixteen yeah. looked old. They had, they, they did have beards. I remember going there and thinking some of them were teachers. <laughs> I think he's answered that. Next one, what's the next yep. one? Tattoos <laughs> and everything. Um, I think uh, they're kids in the, in the earlier years, even. What do you make of the fact that Mariah Carey's £38 million payoff has cost EMI staff uh, their jobs, and we're talking 1,800 EMI staff who have lost their jobs? What do you think of that? Yeah, I mean... I mean, is that silly money, Mariah Carey, on £38 million? She doesn't need that much. She doesn't need that much. <laughs> she has to dress nice, though. It's not her fault. I'd say, um, <laughs> it's bad business. Okay. Because, uh, EMI, did you say? Yes. Right. They've got rid of them, them staff. Yeah. Mariah Carey's left. Who's gonna do the work? <laughs> <laughs> you think, you think Mariah should come back and do some temping? Well, they should have, they should have got a loan and paid her. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Vicious circle, that. <laughs> right. Have you, have you done, you haven't done a business degree or anything, have you? Commerce. You did commerce. Yeah. Where, where did you do that? Where did you do that? At school, you... I'd, I'd learn how to fill out a cheque. <laughs> Pay a bill, and uh, I think uh, I had a trip round Kellogg's. <laughs> <laughs> did you? Uh, did you get? A, did you get an O level? Or did you uh, we know he didn't. You know. Uh, I didn't. But was, uh, was there a commerce exam, or was it just a division of maths? Remember. Well, did you fill out a check? Was it a subset of it maths. It was an option. It was like if you want to do it, you can. <laughs> what was it? Fill, fill out, out a check. check fill pay, out a check, bill, pay a bill. Pay a bill. bill. Have a visit right now. I around Kellogg's and I saw my sister's boyfriend there at the time. He sorted me out with some variety packs. Really? <laughs> what was in them? You know, Rice Krispies and. <laughs> Good stuff. Cocoa Pops? Space dust or whatever it is. Space dust? <laughs> so, sorry, that wasn't Ken Dodd, no. <laughs> no. That was someone else. That was an aunt. <laughs> that was, yeah. yeah. That wasn't Special K. Oh, dear. Well, what about this then? Home Secretary David Blunkett admits that muggers rule some streets. Um, weird this. Because when I was out with you- I don't believe it's gonna be weird, whatever you say, Carl, no, when go we, on. when we were in that pub that night and we got talking about muggers and that, the tip is, um, what I tend to do, because I nearly got mugged once. Act you mental. what? You nearly got mugged once? I nearly got mugged. Yeah. But I, I, but I tried this technique <laughs> of acting a bit mental. <laughs> right, and how did you act mental? Well, this guy wanted me trainers. And, uh, I was in Piccadilly Gardens in Manchester, it was quite late one night. Mm -hmm. And he come up, he said, uh, I want them trainers. I said, you want them? I said, I worked hard for these. He said, how dare you come to me asking, and I, I got a bit livid, and I <laughs> he looked at, he looked at me like, oh my god, he's got a right one here, and he left me. Were you acting mental, or were you just mental? No, I, I put it on a bit. Were you not tetra petrified, though? Well, you don't think about it, do you, when you're sort of in the eyes of danger? <laughs> well, not you, clearly, you're a brave man. So what did you say? It's the I, ju I just... I just went, I just went a bit mad. I just kind of, because he said he wanted the trainers and they were dear ones at the time. And uh, I just, no, you're not having these. So I've crafted, I said I wanted these trainers. Yeah. And you know, went on to tell him how I work at printers and I don't enjoy it and you know, I put in all these hours and that and I have to cycle home for about five miles and I Did he give you his trainers? <laughs> yeah. 
Did you have a knife? No, I just left. No, I didn't get that. Didn't get that violent. Well, that's very brave of you, Carl. Yeah, it's good. good advice, though. Just that mental. Um. Uh, <laughs>